Hi there, this is Saul Chironin from Saul Chironin Films and welcome to part 4 of my Darden Brothers series and today we're going to talk about the 2005 Palme d'Or winning The Child or L'Enfant um, This stars Jeremy Renier as Bruno who was in um, La Promesse, their debut film um, It also stars Deborah Francois as Sonia um, Olivier Gourmet of course turns up at some point as he does in all Dardenne films and Fabrizio Rongoni who was in Rosetta also appears the Dardennes um, kind of use actors quite often and they pretty much up to this point in their career used almost the same crew it's set in the same Belgian town that they kind of grew up with um, a town that was important in industry before World War Two, after World War Two, but then as industry died off, the town fell into decline. In their films, there is much kind of socio-political films about the decline of industry and the rise in poverty and kind of petty crime um, than character studies. So, so far in their, well, films that we've covered in this series, obviously their first two films aren't that readily available, um, we've had a boy, a girl, a father-son relationship, so this time it's the turn of parents. So, we're introduced to Sonia, who has is carrying a young baby um, who we later find out is called Jimmy Jimmy was played by 40 babies it wasn't just one baby because um, there's probably laws against that kind of thing um, and we see her trying to get into her flat but a character called Bruno has subletted the flat so she can't actually get into her flat she's just out of hospital so we then follow her as she's wandering around the streets trying to find Bruno and then we are introduced to Bruno um, we join him in progress of begging for change from Cars played by Jeremy Renier um, so we're introduced to this character who is obviously a grifter a petty thief he's almost like a young um, Fagin character, he has two young boys who do the thieving for him and he pays them and then he has a series of fences that he then gives the goods to and then they pay him money um, one of the boys is called Steve who's um, 14 um, who is the more prominent member of his crew that features later in the film um, and during one of his um, giving goods to one of his fences um, she asks about the kid they've just had and you do know that people pay money for babies to adopt them <clears throat> so there's kind of no secret to where this is going. It's not really going to be a spoiler, particularly. Um, but Bruno essentially sells the kid, the nine-day-old baby, um, for money. In a wonderful scene about the actual mechanism of doing it, he goes to like an abandoned flat, um, leaves the baby in a room. Um, he goes into another room, um, hears something going on, he comes out um, and there's just money left and the baby's gone. Um, Sonia's distraught of where he's been 
um, and he tells her that he sold the baby. Um, it has a classic kind of um, what did I do line. <laughs> it's like, or we'll have another one. Um, and she passes out a couple of times and ends up going to the hospital um, where he's beginning to freak out that she will tell the authorities um, and he'll be rumbled. So he asks for a refund and to get the baby back, which they um, oblige. So he goes to these um, abandoned garages this time and waits in a garage, goes into the next garage and the baby's there. Um, he has to give the money back and his mobile phone back. But of course they want, cause, because they're out of pocket, they want the same money again that they um, paid him um, or he's going to be in trouble and that's as far as I'll take the plot again as we're introduced to Bruno you know I don't think it's a spoiler well, it's too late now because I've told you um, that he sells the baby I think that's fairly evident where it's going it's, I think it's the most predictable Darden film as far as the start because as soon as as soon as the the fence kind of tells them oh yeah people will pay money to for babies to adopt you pretty much know that it's going to happen um, but I'll leave the rest of the, the film for you to enjoy um, because it's another wonderful film by the Dardens um, it's possibly not my favourite out of the five that I've seen um, and the four so far in this video series um, but I would still, I think I, I still rated that five out of five um, so that kind of shows you the the standard um, that they have because again um, they are rocketing up my big board of filmmakers um, so again it's shot if you're familiar with the Dardens and you've been watching this series, it is shot in that kind of documentary, fictional way. Lots of close camera work. There's no music. Well, the Blue Danube plays in a car radio briefly, um, but there's no score, which I love um, because again, too many times scores can be used to manipulate the audience and certainly the last scene of the film, which does have a huge emotional wallop, but that feels completely earned. Whereas other filmmakers would have, you know, a soaring musical score, whereas the Dardens don't go into that. Um, this disc, which again is part of the Darden box set, which I would highly recommend you picking up. Um, it has a really in-depth interview with the Dardens, which is fascinating. I mean, there are a couple of odd characters, um, but they even talk about their audition process, which for Sonia, for example, they started with 250 um, girls to play the part, and then they pretty much go through almost the whole script at the audition stage with people. So, I mean, they are really thorough. It's not like you hear lots of auditions where people read a couple of scenes and that's the audition. The Dardens pretty much go through the whole script with people just at the audition stage. Um, so they are really thorough. Um, you know, these are young people, these are kids having kids. Um, and there's evidence that they're still really kids, you know, they throw stones at each other, they kind of um, splash each other with fizzy drink, you know, they play around, um, even Bruno and his teenage gang of thieves, you know, there's a wonderful scene where they have a laugh about who farted, um, and you just remind yourself that even though they're playing gangsters and they're playing thieves, they are children themselves and there's a scene later in the film that really hits home um, that Steve, the 14 year old, is actually just a wee boy um, even though they're doing crimes. But again, one of the Dardenne's real skills 
is showing people who are doing bad things but still you empathise with them and they have this thing that within like five minutes you're hooked in again I think it's just the way they shoot it's intimate but they keep their hands off so again the last scene which is really quite moving um, they're keeping they're just pointing the camera they don't get involved they don't go hey we're filmmakers um, we're great directors let's do some tricks and stuff they just keep their distance but again the intimate way they shoot you can't help but get involved it's a really wonderful alchemy that they have um, because you would think the way they shoot in such a quote unquote uncinematic way um, would distance you from the work but it actually compels you to go into the work and be with these characters again they are people who are desperate doing desperate things you know Bruno you know very much like Igor you know you could almost imagine Igor growing up and becoming Bruno I mean we like to think he would change his life after La Promesse but in this economic climate in this town probably not he could easily turn into Bruno um, but again it's Bruno's you know when he sells the kid like I said he's like oh what did I do you know we'll have another one he just doesn't have that um, empathy or realisation about what he's done um, as we follow his journey things perhaps change but again that's up to you to watch it but again it's stuff like you know it's these abandoned factories um, you know when they go to sleep in the shelter because they don't have a place to stay because he's rented out their, house, their flat for a couple of days you know it's full of people you know when he actually goes up to sell the baby you know the lifts don't work so he has to take the stairs so you know so far in these four films you have this milieu of this town with faceless underpasses and motorways and grey buildings you know when lifts not working um, you get a real sense you know the Dardenne shot a lot of the documentaries in this place um, a lot of them in the exact same locations that they shoot the first four features in um, so you have a real idea of time and place you have a real feel of desperate people having to do desperate things um, and again they are just so good at not judging these characters um, and again well me personally anyway you know yes Bruno does terrible things but you still empathise with him you can still understand his reasoning for doing it um, I know people might go oh how can you sell a baby how can you sell a baby but the fact of the matter is people sell babies all the time um, in certain places in the world it's it's almost like a cottage industry um, you know John Sales made Cassio still his babies which was about American women going down to Mexico and buying babies um, so it's not as if it doesn't happen um, but again in Bruno's mind it's perfectly justified because he needs money and that's a way of getting money again he says you know he, he always finds money so why hold on to it you know he's more interested in buying a jacket you know than buying food for his newly born baby um, you know at one point he buys Sonia a matching jacket and everything seems fine um, and then he's but he's surprised um, when Sonia obviously has a slightly bad reaction to him selling um, their kid um, but again other filmmakers would make him a one-dimensional monster but that's not how the Dardens work because again because they I don't know how many times I'm going to say this during the series but because they kind of keep their distance as filmmakers 
but show you the characters intimately. Um, their characters are always more than one dimensional characters, which again, other filmmakers just can't do um, or would refuse to do. You know, they would make a they would make moral statements on Bruno before the films even ended. Um, whereas the Dardens never go, oh yeah, this guy's a monster. Um, he's just trying to survive and he doesn't really know any better. Um, it's just another stunning film. Again, I don't know what it is, but you know, again, this one's only about an hour and a half and it absolutely flies by because within, well, obviously just speaking for myself, but within like five, ten minutes, you're immediately hooked into what's going on, um, just like the other um, four Dardens, but other three Dardens in this series that I've seen. Um, yeah, they're just so skilled and listening to them, you know, the pair of them are a lot smarter than I am. I know that's not saying much. Um, but when they talk about their process and why they do what they do, I mean, it is actually it's fascinating. Um, yeah, originally, the film was going to be called The Girl with the Pram, because again, this was a kind of character that they'd seen themselves while they were shooting La Fils. Um Yeah, their, their thought process is really fascinating. Their films are wonderful. Again, if you're looking for films that are have perfect cinematography and everything's beautifully framed, you know, the Dardens don't do that. Um, but what they do do is just beautifully um, nuanced character pieces which tell the truth um, like all great artists should do. They just tell the truth. Um, whether you like the truth or not, or how you respond to that truth, is entirely up to you. Um, but they're certainly, obviously, because it's film, as an audience, you're manipulated to some extent. But you are not manipulated by the Dardens to the extent that other filmmakers manipulate the audience with the use of music, with the use of moral judgments, with the use of kind of the whole artifice of I'm a filmmaker and I'm going to show you all these techniques to make me look good even if it detracts from the actual story and what I'm actually trying to say. Um, the Dardens, like I said, are rocketing up my big board of directors um, because I haven't seen a film yet that I don't think is excellent. Um, so thanks very much for watching part four. I think I've babbled on long enough. Um, let me know what you think of Longfall. And hopefully you'll join me for part 5 of the Dardens. This is Solitary Ronin from Solitary Ronin Films saying thanks very much. <laughs>